Welcome back, everyone, to... Wait. Yes, I am audible. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Tonight is it done. Our main is Dominic, and we have another match for tonight. It's going to be the last replay for tonight. It's going to be a match between Gota and Zenfer on Onyx Galdrin. Well, let's get started. Gota going for the Ampod Factory. Oh, sorry, Zenfer going for the Ampod Factory. Damn it. <sighs> Sometimes the way this is done. This is, I don't think this is actually done in a way that takes into account the relative positioning of the players. I thought it was one point, but no. No, it isn't. Anyway, Gota going for the Ampod Factory as well. So, works out. But I would like blue to be on the left and red to be on the right. I'm not really sure how to make that happen because I looked at the way it works and it, like, it should work that way, but I don't know. Player colors are weird in Spring Engine. So, yeah. We have, well, pretty quick expansion coming in from Denver. I'm going for what they did, I think, was it last? Yeah, it was last time, yeah. Yeah, because they went for Amphib and they were going against a light vehicle player. Now, Gold on the other hand going for single duck up front. Not even really going a whole lot for any units, honestly. I mean, both players basically just going to the very early set of scouts, but not actually building much beyond that. Focusing entirely on getting their economy up as early as possible and getting some defenses up as well. Kind of lucky in both cases that they aren't, because at this point, I think either one going for Major Raiders would actually have something of an advantage, but at the same time, Rav sorry, Onyx Cauldron is such a giant map that I can kind of understand why it's not being done, because, well, it's a giant map. Like, this map is huge. So, getting units from one side to the other to raid out, especially for Ampod Factory, is kind of impractical. I can understand, therefore, why we're not seeing a whole lot of that. Same time, though, Zenfer has managed to defend themselves just fine. And they're also pulling in to probably be able to take out this conch over here in the corner, so I don't see a lot of options that put Zenfer in a bad spot right now. On the other hand, Golda does have a bit of a stronger economy earlier on. They've gotten their expansions that little bit faster, and what else do they have? They've got something. Oh, this metal extractor hasn't even been taken yet. That's why. That would explain it. I'll, well, no, that would explain part of it. Yeah, Gota is focusing a little bit more on their economy, and that is working out quite nicely, whereas Zenfer, their rating hasn't paid off yet. Especially with the defensive duck, it's probably going to be a win for Gota here. Although the first duck hit does actually manage to... No, Zenfer's got this. Zenfer's totally got this. The duck does go down. There's nothing that the conch can really do other than desperately build a lotus, and that's not going to happen. The only hope it really has is that the duck accidentally kills itself, which, I mean, it's a duck. It might do that, especially when it's right next to its target here, but nope. Trying to dig a hole does not manage to do so. Gota unable to save this metal extractor. I mean, the one saving grace will be that the metal extractor will explode. Wait. Well, it's not going to explode enough, so... The duck survives. For now. For now. It's probably going underwater, and that's exactly what Zemper's doing. Putting it underwater to get it a little out of sight, and more importantly, to get it to heal up. Put it in some of the deeper water just to get it through. Oh, that's not where you wanted to go. You wanted to go through the water, not across the land. That was probably a mistake. Still get into that deeper water to heal up. At the same time, Arch is coming in here, pushing away more of the conches. So Zenfer really committed to this harassment. I'm not sure how much it's actually going to do, but not a bad idea. At the same time, though, this duck only heal healed up a little bit. Nowhere near enough to deal with that load. It's just walked straight into its to its death. Not enough attention being paid to that, and that means Zenfer is going to have to deal with everything Golda sends their way, which is quite a lot, all things considered. And two archers will be able to help deal with the ducks. It's just, Zenfer does have to deal with the fact that these ducks are going around the map. Those two archers are in their main base, so Zenfer cannot really use them in any meaningful way. And there is the Lotus here, but the two ducks, that should be enough to deal with the Lotus. At the same time, all the units Zenfer had to raid with are not really doing anything, though at the same time, Zenfer was expanding while attacking. So, that pressure on Gota, while not successful in actually destroying any of the metal extractors, well, except this one up here, was successful in allowing Zen for a fair amount of breathing room to be able to start building up across the map. Downside, though, is that now Gota can release that pressure. Like, they can send out all these ducks and archers that they've been building up this entire game, and the question is, is there enough to actually stop Gota from wiping out everything Zen for built? Because, at this point, it doesn't seem like it. Especially when you consider the way that this duck... That torpedo just bounce. Anyway, especially when you consider that this duck can just hang around here forever and heal up. Like, there aren't any ducks coming around to actually help deal with it. 
Or anything else that can fire underwater, for that matter. However, Zenfer is building up a reasonable amount of Lotuses, so there is hope. It's just not much, considering the ducks can really just waltz right in here and wipe out all these Lotus. Like, this is, what, one Lotus, one Picket against five ducks? The ducks win. No, sorry, one Lotus against a five ducks and a Picket. So, no, that this is entirely Goda's win here. Like, Zenfer's going to have to deal with this army sooner rather than later if they want to actually be able to start expanding and getting their economy going. Because at the moment, Goda is basically just waiting for when to strike. Zenfer's only keeping things alive because Goda allows it. That's how this game is going right now. So maybe the Southwest. The Southwest Gold is actually trying to get rid of it, and Zenfer's already got a reasonable defensive setup. But otherwise, no. This is this is here because Golda allows it. Still, Zenfer is reasonably close in economy, so it's not gonna be falling too far behind. The main problem right now is Eastall, please build more energy. You are about to completely stop being able to actually do anything. I mean, Gold is good for energy. They're okay for build power. They got actually another fine for build power. They're really good for build power, actually. It's 35 build power right now. Or, yeah. Make sure the math right. 20 build power, however, for Zenfer, they are excessing. So, despite their economy, don't read that as a 28. Read that as a 20. That's all that's being spent right now is 20 metal per second. That's it. There might be a little... Okay, there's a little bit spent outside of the factory, but... No. Nah, this is it. Zenfer is e-stalling, and there's nothing they can really do about it. They do have some solar collectors being built up, but the point is, is that there isn't the economy being pushed into the factory. Like, this is... What was it? 30 build power? Yeah, 30, 31 build power actually being pushed into the factory compared to Zenfer's, I don't know, 15, 20? Oh, it's average of 10, I guess. It's all over the place, really. Still, Zenfer managing to get some economy going. I'm a little bit surprised they are building as many solars. To be fair, I wouldn't necessarily build tiles considering how aggressive Golda has been. But there's a decent amount of defenses, and more importantly, Zenfer needs energy now. They can build the stable solar, stable solar collectors later, build the tidal generators, like just... Just go for it. Tidal's all over the place, because those are cheap. And really valuable on this map. They're much more cost-effective than solars. And more importantly, get the power up faster. But, that being said, Zephyr's getting some counter rating going on again. Actually, nice little flank here on Golda. These two archers here won't really be able to do a whole lot of damage, and one of them is almost dead. One of them is dead! The other one will soon die and get distracted by that duck. It's enough to allow the other archer to completely wipe it out, and at this point, Zenfer is in a much better position to do some counter raiding. Again, I really would like to see them actually, you know, get more power to work with, but at least they do have that going on. Get the build power, get there's the caretakers, actually getting up a gunship fire factory as well. Interesting choice. Goat, on the other hand, just finishing up the last touches on the Grizzly. Like, it is very nearly done. And once that's done, it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, because... At this point, Zenfer does have a reasonably reasonably okay raiding force, but they don't have exactly an anti-grizzly force. Not a whole lot of boys, not a whole lot of, well, anything, really. Like, this is the thing. The grizzly is 2,000 metal. I don't know what you're talking about, Dime Friend. Grizzly is totally 2,000 metal. It's exactly what it is. Anyway, back to the game. And more importantly, the fact that there was already a Grizzly on the field, that doesn't change my point, however. Zenfer's not prepared for a Grizzly. That was my point. Some Stingers coming up, which is nice. That's 1,000, no, 850 damage. Okay. Grizzlies can tank nine of those. It's fine. I mean, this, what, it only has, yeah, like, Grizzlies can easily deal with that. I mean, it will help, but it's not enough on its own. Still, though, Zenfer has managed to at least secure the northeast side of the map, so there's something there. And the southwest side of the map, not so much secured, but there is essentially an impasse. I mean, they've, they've created a border. It, Zenfer has a solid border there in the southwest. It's the center of the map that Golda has a lot of control over, which is becoming a challenge for Golda to actually deal with. However, there's so many vulnerable locations on the map, like right here, where this stinger is desperately trying to be built by a conch that is not in high priority, and is now dead, is going to go down. And I realize they put on a high priority for that. That's a really tough thing to remember to do. Like, that's... I, I get that. Like, in this kind of high pressure situation, yeah, it makes sense. You forget, oh, shit, I gotta build the defense now, because that's where the Grizzly is going. But, out of curiosity, how much... Yeah, okay, they know. Zenfer ha... Oops. I, would you please? Thank you. Zenfer has complete knowledge of what's going on here. They're, however, again, doing a fairly decent job of the rating. I mean, Golda right now actually has a weaker economy than Zenfer by 10 metal per second. 
even with the raiding that's happening, Zenford's actually been doing quite nicely because of just taking out the northeast and securing the southwest. But the problem at this point is now there's a grizzly in the southwest, there's a grizzly in the center of the map, there's a fairly large, not grizzly force, but ducks and archers and such that are taking out everything over to the southeast that's trying to raid, and that leaves the, the northeast open. So while Zenford does have a stronger economy, Gulda has a much, much stronger army and is using it very effectively and has it positioned almost perfectly. And now the commander, one grizzly shot away from death. This is death. Commander down for Zenfer. Currently now running basically even with Golda, but again, that energy economy, because they lost all the solar plants that were built in the north side of the map, that was their entire energy economy. They had nothing in their main base, nothing really well protected. So there's no way Zenfer can use any of the metal they have. Not to mention the fact that they are, they're purely excessing. They cannot use more than 20 metal per second just because of the lack of energy. So that commander kill, that pretty much just put the nail in the coffin. There's no way Zenfer can come back from that just for the lack of energy they have. And still, I really like the way they were raiding early in the... Well, mid-game. Early game, it wasn't working out so well. Mid-game, it did work out. But unfortunately, because of that early game not quite working out, Gold was able to amass a fairly large army and just confidently get this grizzly that... I mean, these grizzlies, they were built up when Gorda was dealing with all the raiding going on, but Gorda just needed to push into the grizzlies. I mean, they still had a reasonably strong economy. Zenfer still had a massive amount of e-stall and a massive amount of excess. So, really, it just came down to that. A like, combination of e-stall and excess in combination with the fact that Gota just snatched up all the metal first, got an army, built up faster, and was able to use that army to, to hold the line long enough to build up a grizzly. And then push back again with a larger army on top of the grizzly. At which point, Zenfer basically just had raiding forces and small anti-raiding forces and did not have an anti-assault force. This one, though, Zenfer, well, getting their power back up somewhat. So, there is that. And, of course, the fact that they have switched over to gunships does mean it's going to be a bit of a switch for going to their... Getting an air factory, not even really going for... Ar okay, going for a few archer... No, not archers. Anglers. And not anglers. Not going for anglers at all. Just getting the air factory, probably getting some swifts off that. No, getting some raptors off that. And then... Nah, that's, that's it. Zenfer... Desperately trying, but Gota's already got everything prepared to deal with the air factory. And, really, Zenfer just had nothing to build with. I mean, if you look at the stats here, too. Zenfer was almost even on metal. Like, they were a little bit lower on metal used. It worked out... Well, actually, it's more like 2,000 metal. And then this is where their power came in. They actually got their energy going. See, this little hump of energy income lines up with metal used becoming actually metal used. But considering metal produce is so high... 1,000... Oh, 1,000 metal excess. Well, it's not terrible considering the circumstances. I mean, considering they had pretty much even energy, I guess it's not bad. But it still meant Gota's army. Like, even as Zenfer caught up, just the army is, was already big enough that Gota could go. And this is, like, the first Grizzly right here. So the first Grizzly was already built before we had the energy income bump from Zenfer that allowed them to stop accessing. And allowed them to actually use their metal and bring their metal used up on par with Gota. But at that point, Gota had a Grizzly. And Zenfer had nothing to counter Grizzly with, and Zenfer just could not build up their army any further. So yeah, it was... It was interesting. Kind of worked, but Zenfer basically, they got their army back up. They got everything back in a position around the point that they also started losing everything to attrition due to the Grizzly. I think actually, if you look at the army value graph, I think this is just the delay of the Grizzly. Like, from this peak to this now dropping down is the delay of the Grizzly going from the base and being constructed, you know, adding to unit value, and finding its way to the army front lines. That's, yeah, that's pretty telling. Anyway, that is it for replays. I mean, unless you guys, have, I guess, you know, really want to see some, but that should be for the replays. I'm going to try playing again, see how that works. I'm not not sure it will, but, I mean, frame rate's better, and I'm focusing a bit more on macro now, so that might actually be a little bit less frustrating. Because that's the one thing about Zero K. It's a very frustrating game if you're focusing highly on micro, because units are finicky, especially in small numbers, and if they go left when you want to go right, it doesn't quite work out. Like, you, you lose units, and then you lose the game if you're focusing too much on micro. If you focus on macro, there's a bit more wiggle room. So yeah, gonna yeah, play around with that. Yeah, losing can be frustrating, but if you have something else to focus on, like did I excess metal, or did I... was I reasonably good about expanding quickly, that sort of thing, eh, you can have something to work with. Anyway, 
So I'll have that in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.